Hello everybody, this is GamerGar. Welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For today's video, I'm going to bring to you some amazing tips on how to use and where to place processing machines. So we're going to cover tons of processing machines like kegs, like preserve jars, geode crushers. We're going to cover almost all of them. I'm going to share some great tips with you and more importantly, I'm going to show you some of the best locations in the game as to where you should be placing these processing machines and why. First up, let's talk about the bus stop area. This area is a great place to set up processing machines. Now, I have kegs set up here in this area, but you can put whatever you wish around this zone. You could use preserve bins, you could use iron machines, whatever you want, you can put here. The reason why I have a lot of kegs though is because kegs are one of the best money makers in the game in terms of processing. Because they process all your lovely crops into juices and wines. So as you can see here, I'm just primarily using ancient fruit, but there's other potent crops you can put in these kegs as well. You've got star fruit, for example, which you can get in summer. You've got strawberries and rhubarb, of course, which you can get in spring. You have pumpkins that you can get in fall. So even if you can't access the lovely star fruits, there's alternatives that you can put into these, you know? If you get your hands on an ancient fruit, best thing to do with it by a long shot is to put it into a seed maker keep replicating it until you have a huge ancient fruit farm and try to put your ancient, ancient fruits either into a greenhouse or over on ginger island if you have the 1.5 dlc update as we can see here there's also another stretch of land uh, that the bus doesn't actually go no npcs go here so you can fill this up with kegs you can even go into the tunnel here now I've put down some lampposts as well just to kind of brighten up the place a bit because it was very dark inside. But you can fill up this whole room with processing machines as well. So I suppose the rule of thumb here is try not to use a huge amount of space on your farm for sheds and processing machines. Instead use the spaces outside of your farm where the NPCs don't go. And this is very close to your farm as well so this is another magnificent place where you can just throw down tons of processing machines and make huge profits without sacrificing huge space on your farm. Here's another location just north of your farm. No NPCs actually use this road, so you could just consider this as part of your farm. And even though you can't plant crops up here, you can put down as many process machines as the map can actually hold. So what I've done here is I've just put down some bone mills, which are really good for fertilizers and for speed grows and tree things like that. I've also got preserve bins put down here as well. And I also have some lightning rods on the rare occasion if I get a stormy day. Those lightning rods will generate battery packs for me. What's great about this location is it's very close to your house. All you have to do is just leave the house, literally take a five second walk up north and you're here. So this is probably one of the best locations in the game for placing processing machines. In terms of processing machines used, I think the bone mills are absolutely amazing. You can get those from a special orders quest that the wizard will give you. You just have to collect bone fragments for him. And you get back great things like tree fertilizer, speed grow, quality fertilizer, and deluxe speed grow. They are all amazing, amazing fertilizers and speed grows that you can use for your crops to make huge profits. So you can't go wrong with the bone mills. Next up, we have, of course, the quarry. Now, the quarry can be used for all kinds of activities. I use it primarily for wood and for coal myself. So what we have here is a huge tree farm of mahogany trees. We're just going to blow them all down. I always get a great sense of satisfaction when I do that. I know I don't get half as many mahogany seeds because the bombs blow them away. But if you have tons and tons of mahogany seeds, by all means, just plant the bombs. Save yourself some time in-game and, of course, in real life. And just blow the trees down, collect the wood. What you do with all that wood? There's loads of things you can do with mahogany wood. One of the things I do with it, of course, is put it into the wood chipper that you can get in Robin in winter. And you can get back regular wood from that. What you can do with regular wood? Well, half the items you need to make in this game and most of the upgrades that you need to do involve wood. It is probably one of the most important resources in the game. And if you don't need any upgrades, you can always just convert the wood into coal using the charcoal kettles. So that's the setup I use here in the quarry. It's primarily used for a tree farm. But you don't need to use it as a tree farm if you want to. You could fill up this quarry with cakes. You could fill it up with preserve jars. You could fill it up with solar panels if you wanted to. Or lightning rods. You could fill it up with anything that you want. Because the area is so big. No NPCs come here. It's basically a huge playground for you. 
to test out your processing capabilities. So you absolutely can't go wrong with setups like this in the quarry. Another great place for processing machines, especially recycling machines and crab pots, they, they work wonderfully together, is the tide pools. Now you do need 300 wood to fix the bridge and access this area, but it is so worth it. So the setup I'm using here at the moment in the tide pools is a combination of crab pots. I also have the pork where I don't have to put bait into the crab pots. Now I could have got the pork where they just give me back fish, but this setup is better because if I get back trash, I can very easily put that trash into the recycling bins and get back some real good resources. The recycling bins can give back some real good stuff. They can give back, they can give back cloth, they can give back coal, they can give back iron ore, they can give back torches. Recycling bins are one of the most underestimated processing machines in the game. Because you get trash from so many places, you get it if you open up people's trash bins. You know, you get it when you fish. And it can accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. The best thing to do when it accumulates to a huge degree is make some recycling machines and get back some nice resources from your hard work. You even get back refined quartz as well, which is really nice because you need refined quartz for quality sprinklers and the like. So you can't go wrong with a setup like this. Crab pots and recycling machines are a match made in heaven, in my opinion, of course. <laughs> Next up we have of course the mines. Now NPCs do go into the starter zone here, but if you just go over here to where, to where the dwarf is, no NPCs or any sort of activities happen over here. So all the processing machines put down over here are safe. One of the best processing machines in my opinion you can put here are furnaces, because it's just in such a great location. And because you have the minecarts, you can get to the mines very, very easily. It's literally just a few seconds walk away from your farm. So I'm just processing radioactive ores here into radioactive bars. You can get these, of course, once you complete Key's Secret Walnut Room quest, which is Danger in the Deep. And once you get through the 120 levels of the hardened version of the mines, you can just then farm it and farm it over and over again for radioactive ores. You need these bars to make the end game process machines and, of course, end game items the game has to offer. But more importantly, when it comes to using spaces in the game for processing, you can't around with the mines at all. You can make pretty big profits if you use setups like this, because when you're going down into the mines to get your ores, to get your valuable materials, just link it up with the blacksmith profession, and you're going to make tons of money every single day for processing all these lovely bars. Next up, we have the Ginger Island Beach. Now, this is the East Beach, and this is the location where not many or no NPCs will actually go. So, you can use this location for your processing needs. Now, I'm using Geocrushers here at the moment. These are absolutely amazing, and you can get these from Clint by completing one of his special orders quests. Now, a Geocrusher works the exact same way as Clint does when he breaks open a Geode for you. The only difference is you don't have to pay 25 gold to use this. Instead, you need to use a piece of coal. So early on it might not be a good idea because coal is extremely valuable, but later on in the game where coal becomes less valuable, you know, when you have processing methods available to you to get tons of coal, this method is great for finding the last few minerals you need to complete the Gunther side quest and to get all the minerals for him so you can get that lovely star job and of course magic rock candy from Gunther. Geo crushers are the way to go to save you time in real life when it comes to getting really difficult achievements like perfection for example. As we can see here, there's so many minerals you can get in the game, I don't have enough space in my backpack to hold them all. So, obviously I'm going to have to sell these, come back, get them again. Unless of course I set a chest, which I have done so on the very left there I have a chest which is going to take all of these minerals, so I can just put them all into the chest and I can just go back then and get the rest of them. Utilising this method, if you have hundreds of Omni Geodes, you can very easily get all the minerals the game has to offer very very quickly you just have to do a few skull cavern runs and you'll be good to go because you'll have hundreds of omni geodes by the time you're finished with your skull cavern setup what i also love about this place is that it has a really nice aesthetic it even has a mermaid on rainy days which waves to us <laughs> which i think is really nice next up let's talk about the sores the sores is another amazing place you can place down processing machines so I'm just using mayonnaise machines here, but you can put anything you want down here. Krobus, of course, loves void eggs, and he also loves void mayonnaise. So what better way to honor a great friend like Krobus than to put mayonnaise machines that processes his loved goods. 
So you can put cakes down here, preserve jars down here. You can you can even put garden pots down here, and have and have crops grown out of them. No problem at all. You know, you could have a strawberry farm down here if you wanted to. <laughs> you know, um, your imagination sets the limit for you what you do down here in the source. But for the purpose of this video, we're just using mayonnaise machines and we're just putting eggs into them here. The great thing about the stores is that it also has the Statue of Uncertainty, which is used to reset the perks on your professions. It also has the wonderful Krobus, which never moves, so you never have to worry about him moving around the place, destroying your valuable processing machines. He stands there all the time. Even when he moves into your house, he doesn't move around. Instead, a chest appears in his stead, and you can just use the chest to purchase his stock. So when it comes to you know, locations to place on processing machines, the source is a great place. As you can see there as well, you can still fish down here no problem with all the processing machines set up. So all these processing machines aren't going to limit you in any way at all. Let's get a void mayonnaise right now, give that to Krobus and we're going to make his day. There you go Krobus, there's a lovely void mayonnaise for you. This is an amazing gift my people, it's a great honour to receive such a thing. <laughs> he also says the same thing when you give him a wild horseradish, which is what I love about Krobus. Next up we have of course the desert. Now the desert you see here will obviously look a bit different to the desert you know because this is the Stardew Valley Expanded Desert. It is absolutely huge. But if you don't have the Stardew Valley Expanded mod, don't worry because the regular desert will still give you enough space where you could have your very own solar panel farm. Now obviously you don't have to use solar panels in the desert. You can put down your kegs, you can put down any processing machine you wish. The reason why solar panels should be prioritized is because you never get rainy days in the desert. It's always going to be a sunny day, which means you're always going to get a daily charge on these lovely solar panels so you can harvest hundreds of battery packs every few days. Not only is this a really good money maker, but battery packs are needed for so many great items in the game. One item, of course, be the Crystallarium, another being an Iridium Sprinkler. You also need battery packs to unlock Ginger Island. You also you need battery packs for so many things. Next up, of course, we have your very own barns and coops. So a lot of people that I know to play this game don't actually use the space the barns and the coops give you. Your animals won't actually destroy your processing machines. They'll just walk around them. Your animals are super friendly. Unlike Stardew Valley NPCs where they would literally just destroy what is ever in their path. So you should use the space that you get in the barns, especially the barns, and fill the barn up with processing machines. I could have put way more cheese presses down here if I wanted to. These won't stop your animals from getting out. You know, when it gets to daytime and you, you leave this barn, you're going into a separate instance. So even if all these animals were stuck, they would still automatically teleport out of your barn and they'd be able to roam around and still eat the grass. So if you have tons and tons of barns like this, or coops, save yourself some space and just Fill them up with lovely processing machines. Next up, this is just an honourable mention, but the Witch Swamp here is another real nice place where you can put down processing machines. And the reason why it's a real nice place is because no NPCs come here at all. It's also a real nice place to do some fishing. You can get Void Salmon here, which it sells for a really nice amount of money. And if you have the Sturge Valley Expanded, you can also get the Void Eel, and that sells for quite a lot of money too. And inside of the Witch's Hut, you can also place on more processing machines. Now, I have a gate placed over there on the bottom right to prevent myself from accidentally stepping on the teleportation sign. I don't know how many times I've stepped on that by accident when trying to get all of the lovely items off my processing machines. But the Witch's Hut is another great place to set up processing machines if you need space to do so. And of course, uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is using Robin to further extend your house. You can actually add a southern room here using Robin and you can also add a secondary room as well up on the top left hand side of your house which is a corner room and you can use those rooms to place even more processing machines or whatever you wish it doesn't have any processing machines. So in my bottom room here I have strange capsules put down and these are just accumulations of capsules that have landed on my farm over the years of playing the game. And what's really strange is that every every time I go into that room with the strange capsules, my phone rings. So I answered the phone this time and it just said that it was a pre-recorded message in a foreign language. I wonder does that have any sort of link to the strange capsule? It's a very interesting interesting theory, but maybe it's just coincidence every time. And up here in the corner room, I'm just I just have old, old statues. <laughs> I don't know what else to put up here because I've processed the machines all over the place. 
So I'm going to leave the video there and I really hope you enjoyed it. As per usual, the next Stardew Valley video will be uploaded in the next couple of days. If you'd like to binge watch cozy Stardew Valley content, then check out my other Stardew Valley videos right there on the screen for you to watch. There's 100 day challenge videos, there's lovely tips videos for you to enjoy. There are literally hundreds of Stardew Valley videos that you can watch. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.